The head of the World Health Organization is now warning of a wave of death in parts of Asia, Africa and Latin America, of course, from COVID. Well, he says other countries are working on booster shots and relaxing restrictions. He called vaccine nationalism morally indefensible and an effect, ineffective public health strategy. Free regions are as vulnerable to the spread of the Delta variant as Africa. Vaccinations are lagging well behind the rest of the world. You can see it there in the chart. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, the president recently warned that hospitals in the capital of Kinshasa are overwhelmed by a rise in COVID-19 infections. The finance minister of the DRC, Nicolas Gazadi, joins me. Now, minister, the situation is pretty dreadful. And I can't really see that it gets much better until you get vaccination rates higher, which isn't going to be soon. So what do you need? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, what we can say is that we are, the situation, the figures on COVID are not as uh, bad as you are, you are saying. We have around 40,000 people infected and uh, less than 1,000 dead so far. But in, of course, we are facing the, the new variant and we are making every effort to, to, to deploy uh, vaccination uh, countrywide because we want to ease restriction and also uh, open the economy because right. restriction is not a sustainable solution. And what we have uh, on the table currently, we are securing 36 million vaccine, Johnson & Johnson, in addition to the COVAX initiative and other small initiatives, because we all we want to reach the, 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 the world uh, level of 60% of, uh, uh, of uh, protection with vaccine. The difficulty is, of course, getting the vaccine, paying for the vaccine, but ultimately keeping your economy going at the same, I mean, I, I know you were growing fast and your latest numbers are not good, but keeping your economy growing whilst you deal with this crisis. Yes, the first year was a bit difficult because it was new, but we had good support for the international from the international community, solidarity. But now we are doing quite well. The economy is still improving. Uh, even last year, our results were among the best one in Africa. We had a positive, uh, uh, right. positive uh, growth rate, etc. But now uh, we are taking advantage of the increase of uh, the price of raw material, uh, specifically copper and, uh, and, uh, and cobalt. Right. And we have good figures. The economy is going well. Except, Minister, the IMF in its latest review, in its latest, because you're going for a, a, obviously an extended facility, it makes the old questions and says that, you know, it's all about structural reform, transparency, lack of corruption. I, you've read this a million times, Minister, in different ways over many years. And here we are again with the country being told, yes, we'll lend you money, but only when you've cleaned up your act. Yes, but now we are beyond lip service. We are acting very concretely. We have key results coming, uh, and the change was uh, made by, uh, since uh, 2019 when, uh, under the leadership of the new president, Felix Tshisekedi, now we have concrete action uh, against corruption. We have results. We have strengthened auditing and monitoring bodies. We, now the justice is empowered. They are more free from political, uh, political pressure. And we have some results that we have never seen in the country since uh, decades. We can say that we are in a very historical moment in, in, in DRC uh, with regard to uh, fighting uh, corruption. Minister, you have a standing invitation. Don't give this very often. You have a standing invitation to come back on Quest Means Business to discuss and review the improvements as and when they happen. Minister, I'm grateful that you joined us tonight from Istanbul, the finance minister from uh, the DRC.